Hi, I am Dr. Julie Brown. I am your character-trained concussion doctor and board-certified chiropractic neurologist. Today, I'm gonna to continue talking about eye movements, and in particular, we're gonna talk about pursuits, vergence and divergence, and a little bit with saccades. So the first one we're gonna talk about is a pursuit. That means to track a target, and we call it a smooth pursuit because it should be a smooth motion. So when you follow it, it's smooth, and this is done when I go from this side to this side, by the parietal lobe and temporal lobe, they work to pull the eyes this direction. They have to be, you're gonna use a pursuit when something is less than 30 degrees per second. Anything faster than that, the, the brain cannot compute an image to get to the fovea, to go to the retina, the, to the occipital lobe, and back to the frontal lobe to say, here's what it is and here's where it is. So if you have a problem with smooth pursuits or not being able to track, that's gonna be an issue. So the average normal functioning brain should be able to pursue something up to 30 degrees per second. I'll come back to pathology on that in a moment, but we're gonna talk about vergence, which is the ability to see something up close, to have your eyes converge, and to see something go away, which is a diverge. These are also very hard linked to the otoliths in the vestibular system, while the pursuits may go more with the canals of the vestibular system, so I test them all together. It's hard to look at one without the other. But if you have a combination of a virgence issue, commonly I see like the eyes don't move together. They, they, they move out together, they don't come in. A lot of people who have difficulty reading really have a problem with this movement because um, their eyes don't want to see the same target. So if I have an eye going straight forward and an eye going here, they're not going to quite hit the same target as they used to. If you've grown up with this, it may be less of an issue because your brain may stop looking, not looking at one eye, but it just kind of ignores that image and that's how it deals with the sensory visual mismatch. But if you're a fresh concussion patient or neurodegenerative, this is new to you and so you may have more, notice more vision issues. So. One of the things that I can do, I can say, hey, does somebody pursue fine out here, but they don't pursue fine in here? Because that could overlap with a virgence divergence issue. If you have an issue with a pursuit and you cannot keep up with that 30 degrees, the eyes are gonna throw in what's called a saccade, or if the pursuit is greater than 30 degrees. So if you go here, your eyes gonna jump, basically. If I'm smoothing and it goes fast, my eyes are going to do that motion and do a fast motion. The problem with this fast motion is it, your brain fills in what it thinks it sees. You're actually blind during that time and there is a reflective output to the spinal muscles that make them more unstable, which makes you more prone to injury. So this is why sideline testing of eye movements is critical to understand and know what's going on to say, this is gonna be dangerous for you. We don't want damage to your spinal cord or your discs or your vertebra, whatever it may be. So those two go together, the, suc the saccades come in because they're not appropriate during that time unless something quickly changes or you know, you're know you going from near far, those are gonna be saccades. Um, again, we see this in con concussion a lot. I see this in neurodegenerative disease. This up and down pursuit is usually one of the first ones to have an issue when it comes to pursuits. Uh, when it comes to testing, we look at balance, we look at the full body. If the eyes have a trouble, trouble pursuing, I'm going to test sensory motor parietal lobe sound temporal lobe issues that would appear on this side because it's really perceived a little more on this side um, and look at those mismatches. I'm going to do my therapies, which may be vestibular, maybe visual, maybe muscle work or an adjustment. It depends on the person. It is never the same. Every person is individual based on, you know, what is brought up. I may, to work, may need to work on the brain stem, on the eye muscles. There's a lot that goes into it, but really understanding the dynamics, the nervous system, who fires to where, what, and when is important, especially when dealing with concussion. If you have any questions, feel free to ask below. I also have a website if you wanna ask me a question privately. Um, also, feel free to subscribe. I'm trying to make uh, videos to help educate the public. And that's it, we'll see you next time, thanks.